split squat isometric. So if I turn to the side view here, and I have my left leg forward, we're essentially getting set up like we're gonna do a split squat. When I come down, this is gonna vary for everybody, so look at your programming. If you are somebody that's kind of coming off of a season versus somebody that's in the season, maybe you're a basketball player versus an offensive lineman in football, everyone's gonna have a little bit different um, positioning. And typically what we try to do is pay attention to the stress that's being placed on the body. If you're in or out of a sport, how far into the season you are if you're in a sport, how far in the off season you are if you're out of a sport, all those variables matter. So look at your programming. We're trying to mimic joint angles for those particular things. So if I'm like a jumper, kind of like a volleyball, basketball type of a sport, I'm gonna try to mimic those jump angles a little bit more. And a lot of times what we'll see is people doing split squats in a really, really deep position. When you go to jump in those sports, typically what you'll see is most athletes don't actually even get in that much depth. So if I'm doing a split squat that's focused on basketball, maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop on my knee and my thigh at a 90 degree angle relative to each other, right? So I'm literally in this position. And I would start with body weight and go for a set hold. Your programming will tell you how long the holds are, if you should add weight, those types of things. Obviously you wanna do both sides. Um, a lot of the jumping sports don't happen off of two feet. And a lot of the weight room based things that most people do is based off of two feet. So this is a good way to kind of introduce some jumping strength and joint specific angles, which then transfer over to the sport.